All right, five minutes after nine o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Wednesday morning. I love this segment, by the way. Uh, it's called Food Truck Talks because we talk about food. Is that why I love it? You know what? It's, it's not just the food. It's the variety of food that we've been introduced to so far. And today, I think for the first time, I don't think I've ever really heard about Native American food or a Native American menu. We are going to learn about that in just a little bit. Uh, food Truck Talks, you've been hearing this now. I think this is the fourth week you've been doing this, right, Mark? Yes. Um, Jeremy Adams is on the phone. He's the owner of Prestige Food Trucks. So if this conversation makes you want to go into business for yourself with a food truck, that's the guy who you will call to get yourself set up. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning. There he is. Uh, Mark Robert Benedetto is in the studio. If you're wondering, well, where in the world will you park this truck so you can make some money? Well, Mark makes events happen, and at the events, he uh, invites you to park your truck and sell some food. <laughs> Pretty simple as that. And good morning, Mark. How are you, how are you doing? Good morning. And uh, we are meeting for the first time uh, Maria S. and George Hershaft, and they are the owners of a truck we're going to learn about today called Unto These Grills Food Truck, which I actually have a picture of. So if you're watching the video, let me put it on. There it is. So it's a nice looking truck. Look at that design on there. It looks like, oh, it's like a waterfall and an outdoor greenery and everything. So George and Maria, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very good. Did you guys come up from South Florida? Did I, did I understand that right? Yes, yes, we drove up yesterday. Where, where in South Florida? Down by Stewart, Palm Beach County. Oh, okay, okay. I know where the area is. Mm-hmm. Um, so am I right? Is it Native American food? Yes, it is. Wow. You know, is, I don't even know if I've ever been to a restaurant that serves Native American food. Well, that's one of the yeah. reasons we got into it. It's, it's uh, very unique, and uh, we're one of the few trucks in the United States that does this. Now, is Native America was so diverse. I mean, the, the tribes from the south, for example, would have been different than the tribes in the northeast. But is the food the same across the country, or do you, con- do you have a combination? <laughs> the food varies across the country. Okay. If you go out west, there is a truck in the California, southern California area, who does the uh, southwestern style. Okay, okay. And there is a incredible chef in the um, middle of the country who is known for his Sioux-type cooking. Really? And and mine is Native American Northeastern Cherokee with a huge Southern flair. Oh, wow. Okay, that. That, that's going to take some that. explaining. That's going to take some explaining. So, uh, <laughs> well, th- this is exciting. This is going to be fun to learn about. Uh, Mark, did your event take place last week? Unfortunately, Mother Nature stepped in and well, rained it out. That's the story it lately. rained it out to the point where we have decided not to take the gamble and pursue any further. Oh, so, no. So we've pulled the plug on, on the series for now until we can find a facility with a nice dry ground. Like What I mean by that is is that facility has just got a grass field, so we need a concrete parking lot. So oh, I see. If anybody out there has a nice big uh, blacktop parking lot that we can use. There's got to be a few em- a empty shopping centers somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for yeah, sure. Our, our, big, our big screen is waiting to play a movie mm-hmm. for you. I know, I know. And <laughs> we've got, uh, today we've got, would have been the day. We've got some delicious food trucks uh, waiting to, to feed mm-hmm. you right. Today would have been the day, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's beautiful uh, out. And Jeremy, how are you doing down in, you're in Orlando, right? Yeah, doing, doing fantastic. We actually had a, there's a show on a CNBC that aired last night called the West Texas Investors Club, and, uh, I'm actually going to be on that show. Um, I, we taped earlier in the year, and my episode is supposed to air in the next month or so. so oh, nice. Congrats. That, that's going to be exciting. Nice. Have you had a preview of it, or will you be seeing it for the first time like everybody else? <laughs> I'll be seeing it for the first time. They, they, <laughs> they didn't consult me with anything as part of the edit, so I'm kind of nervous to see uh, what they do with me. You know, since you guys have been coming on, I won't name restaurants, but we have a couple. We, Robin, I would think about this. We've gone to a couple of different events, like the Strawberry Festival, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, I've, and we were saying, you know, there are some restaurants in town that have trucks of their own, similar to the trucks we've been talking about. So I guess it's not unusual for a restaurant to have a truck as well, right? No, not at all. But, these, but the, the trucks that you've been featuring are standalone, right? There are no associated restaurants with them? Do you guys have a restaurant in addition to the truck? No, no we, we don't. don't. No? How long have you had the truck that you have now? Uh, just past a year, uh, three days ago. So what'd you do a year and four days ago? <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing? Uh, I retired from law enforcement after 34 years and uh, was looking for something to do. And I also run a charter business for a cap- as a captain. And um, we kind of looked into it and met Maria and, 
she put forward this this you know nominee food and i said well that's something we need to look at are you a couple as a personal question but are you you don't <laughs> yeah. have the same last name oh you are a couple okay yeah. are, are you married but just didn't no. take no. the name okay <laughs> all right just getting personal everything but where, where, where were you were you a police officer yes where where uh, martin county Sure. Where? Martin County Sheriff's Office. Oh, here in Florida? Yes, okay. here in Florida. You got that uh, New York kind of an accent. No, we're just from New Jersey. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, Did right. you see what they were doing on the Jersey Turnpike yesterday? Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what happened yesterday? A truck no, a truck flipped under a, an overpass, mm-hmm. went on fire, and a guy died. But there was like a three-hour wait for the traffic to move at all. They eventually cleared it up by getting everybody to make a big U-turn. Not a joke. That's what they had to do. But the people were sunbathing out there and playing baseball and throwing footballs. They needed yeah. a food truck out there. They needed That's a food right. truck. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that have been a great opportunity? Ironically, I, I used to work as a, as a tow truck driver back when I was like a you know, younger youth, 1998. Right. And uh, Route 80, we had a tanker blow up on Route 80 there. And a guy was coming out selling pizzas. No way. I'm not kidding you. Oh, wow. This is before food trucks took off, but somebody needs to capitalize on that. Just just saying. Just driving around waiting for a traffic jam. (laughs) (laughs) That's a great name. Hey, Jeremy, there you go. Your next concept. The food, the the traffic jam truck. (laughs) I like that roadside assistance guy that runs up and down the highway all day. Only this is the food version. Yeah, yeah. And and the word jam, I mean, that's... Peanut Tra- butter and jam. Yeah, traffic know. jam. We're, imagine a peanut butter food truck. I don't know if that will go over well. I think enough. there is one. There is a peanut butter there and jelly truck? peanut butter. And oh, my yes. gosh. I uh, love the menu because you have Yeah, that's what we want to know about the, the menu. In English, and then what language is that? That's Cherokee or Telagi. Mm-hmm. Are you fluent in that? Uh, yes. Uh-huh. You are? Oh, my yes. gosh. That right. is amazing. Is that your heritage? Yes. I am one half Italian and one half Cherokee. Oh Th- that God. makes for some good food, right? <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> it made for an interesting raising and a and a very varied kitchen in my grandparents' and parents' home. So mm-hmm. which which parent was the uh, Cherokee, Cherokee heritage yeah. is on my mother's family. And so, oh, so oh, so the cook of the house typically is the mother. So you had a lot of Cherokee food? Actually, the hugest influence in my life was the uh, New York Italian. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Oh, really? Yeah. You know what we were talking about yesterday? Which would you prefer, baked spaghetti or pizza? And everybody has said baked spaghetti. So I'm thinking I must not have ever had this because pizza would win hands down for me every time. Mm. Yeah, makes what sense. What do you think? Oh, well, pizza is more of the American trump card. You know, everywhere is pizza. Oh, I didn't know that. Pizza of every kind. Mexican pizza. pizza. Oh, okay. So that's why we like... (laughs) We like pizza. We like things on bread. All right. So the first thing on your menu is bold buffalo. Yes, sir. What is that? That's a hamburger, right? That is a fresh ground and seasoned buffalo burger. Yep. Oh, my gosh. And where do you get that meat from? Uh, We purchase it through our purveyors. It's, uh, of course, farmed. It's not like someone's going out and shooting and destroying buffalo. Mm -hmm. And uh, ground and fresh cryo pack and then deliver. What, what was that fresh? What's Cryo that? packed. Oh, they, frozen. Yeah. Okay. Well, yes, frozen. Yes, uh, it okay. depends on which purveyor you're getting it through. Okay. It could be fresh, refrigerated, or frozen. Okay, but the word cryo means frozen. It means that the pack has all the air taken out and it's oh, shrunk okay. down tight. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, venison burgers. Mm-hmm. I've never seen that on a menu before. So good. <laughs> it's good. You like it? Oh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> and, and that's yeah, and you call it the dancing deer. Yeah, <laughs> you should have called it Bambi or something. Oh no, the Bambi oh, burger. No, no, no. 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 all over you. Uh, Bambi was said once at the table when the children were small. It didn't go over very good. Oh really? <laughs> really? Uh, when you uh, prepare this and you have your different spices and seasonings, mm-hmm. do those uh, spices and uh, seasonings come from your heritage? I keep it traditional as possible. Oh my I gosh. wanted to bring out. Um, As you go up in age and your children grow up and you have grandchildren, you kind of look back at family history and heritage, ethnicity. Um, Building the trucks was going to be, this is one, hopefully, of a few that reinforces my kids and their history and their family. Sweet. Nice. nice. Wow. Something to pass on and pass down. We'll be right back. Hold on. We'll get paper. Sorry. Brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today's sunshine mixing with clouds. There'll be a couple of thunderstorms around this afternoon and evening, the high 89 to 93, and later tonight, partly cloudy, those 72 to 76. Tomorrow, sunshine mixing with clouds. Watch out for an afternoon thunderstorm or two, high 89 to 93. Friday, partly sunny with a shower or thunderstorm around in the afternoon, high 86 to 90. 
From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. We are saving thousands with Robert Palmer. Uh, so yeah, so rule number one is always shop around. Always shop around. If you're trying to get a mortgage, if you're trying to get the best credit card, if you're looking at student loans, cell phone bills, you name it, rule number one is always shop around. Always shop around. That's rule number one, just one more vital part of fighting back to stop being a financial zombie. Yes, you can take the mystery out of the complicated world of finances. Take charge when it comes to your money. Listen in on The Source, 96.3 FM and 1370 AM, Saturdays at 12.05. This is a test of the emergency alert system. This is only a test. If this had been an actual emergency, such as a hurricane or tornado, official messages would have followed the alert tones. WOCA serves the Marion County area. This concludes the test of the emergency alert system. Good credits, bad credits, it's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSales.com, Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSales.com. License and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer up charge. Undercutting rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. All right, 17 minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I was just looking at the, the photograph of the uh, truck that we are talking about today. It is called Unto These Grills Food Trucks. That is a cool name. Is there a story behind the name of the truck? If you've ever been to the Reservation in Cherokee, North Carolina, one of... The I main stays there. I've been to the casino. Does that count? Have you been to? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of counts. That kind of counts. Well, down down from the casino, down ac- across from the river, uh, one of the biggest attractions. It always has been. It's been there for a very long time. Is called Unto These Hills where the Cherokee portray their history. Not the history you find in history books, not the way the the American uh, history is taught in the classroom, but our version of our history as put and passed on by the elders. Oh, nice. And it's a glorious show to see. It will give you a whole new view and a whole new respect for the Native American. And uh, growing up, when we visited, that was my favorite. When I brought my kids back to the res, and uh, to the res, <laughs> to the res. Uh, when I, I know, right? When I bought my brought my kids back, that's when I realized that all the young people called it the res. Oh, okay. so <laughs> because when, they don't live in the hood, they live in the they res. live in the res. <laughs> Got it. The res. And so when we went back to the res, my kids were incredibly fascinated with their culture and things they had never seen before. And unfortunately, all of my family on my mother's side had passed away before I had my children. Oh. So they had never had the experience or known their grandparents, aunts and uncles. Mm-hmm. And and their grandmothers so this was new to them and they were totally fascinated and they dove right in and they became Native American uh, competitive dancers and it became part of their life which made me very proud that is cool that is really cool and that you're telling us something off the air before you came on about a, uh, a video competition oh that's really uh, wonderful. I've always been in for oh gosh since I was a little girl Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and our Boy Scouts in our area have a Native American dance team, which is called the Hitchity, and that is for boys and girls. That is a program where the girls of a certain age can join in and girls become Boy Scouts. And right now, the Order of the Arrow, NOAC, is going on in Michigan at the university, and our local boys, who are our Hitchity dancers, are competing there. And yesterday I was so proud because they were in the top 10. Today they go back to compete, see if they can hit the top five and maybe take it all away and bring it home. That'd be great. So cool. So wow. proud of those boys. Very nice. <laughs> so I would I would show up at your truck and I would want to try something I've never tried before. Um, I see something delicious. What do you see? Yeah, uh, if you haven't spotted it yet, we were we were <clears throat> salivating over something last week. What is it? <laughs> Bacon. 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 Uh, you haven't seen this yet? No, show me. Where, where am I? Where the is the big home? pig? <laughs> oh, it's in bold. So, so what is it? What's the difference? Do not see that. Where? The big, the big oh, I, oh, I see the big dog. The, where is it, Robin? The big? Right above the big dog. Right. Oh, the big pig. Oh, there yes. it is. Oh, ta- tasso ham. I don't even know what tasso ham is. Thick cut peppered bacon, slow roasted hand pulled pork, and cheese. 
Oh, it's sounding good already. <laughs> Enveloped in, in fry bread, dusted and drizzled with berry reduction. It is the Native American version of the real Monte Cristo. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. So I knew there was something good about it. I want to know about that. But it's pork, bread. pork, and pork. How could it be bad? <laughs> and cheese. And cheese. <laughs> so th- was cheese common in, in Native American food? <laughs> you know, no. there, there is something on the website, and it is on the back of my brochure that says, we take the old and brought it into the new. Oh, okay, we, okay. We're trying to give you the updated version, the classics, in a whole new way where it's, you know, so marketable in 2015. We're trying to let everybody see what's out there in Native American cuisine and how close to it is. I mean, let's be honest, Native American. Mm-hmm. Just as American as hot dogs and apple pie, maybe even more so. Maybe even more so. George, <laughs> when, when you first were introduced, uh, did you have Indian food for the first time or Native American food? That's a funny story uh, because when we first got into this, <laughs> We went to all these different events where all the food trucks were. And she introduced me to this truck that had some fry bread. It was uh, listed as Navajo dessert bread. Yes. And I tried tried it for the first time and thought, my God, if this is what it is, I'm not building this truck. (laughs) (laughs) It was was really, to me, it was really bad. And she told me that, no, that's not even close to what we're going to do. And uh, we started to cook in her her, uh, daughter's house. Some fry bread and everything, and that's what really changed it around. Really? Yes. Tell us about that fry bread. I'm curious. Fry bread. The way my great-grandmother told me was, during all the transitions and change and uh, driving the Cherokee to Oklahoma and putting them on reservations, um, there were a lot of promises made in those treaties and those agreements. The promises for food and land and seed and animals to raise so that we could become self-sufficient. Well, those promises kind of fell through. But, you know, American government, anything's possible. Mm -hmm. And what they used to get was (laughs) inedible and things that they were, you know, no longer good for the military or anyone else. Oh and they would dump off these barrels or these sacks of flour and corn meals and items like that. And to make them edible, they had to find a way to survive. And uh, so they would process the flours and everything. And once it was cleaned and processed and deep fried, it was safe to eat. Mm-hmm. So hence fry bread and other oh, items. Oh, wow. Cornmeal dishes and the flour dishes came from necessity. But... Over the years, and my grandmother used to tell me this, she said, look at every culture on the planet. Somewhere, sometime, they had to sustain themselves. And almost every culture has a form of a fried bread or dough. And oh, it's how true. fascinating. It's very wow, true. Wow. Because that sustains life, that heavy carb diet. Maria, does every culture have a hoe cake? <laughs> <laughs> Every I was culture. waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, because I would buy that just so I could say I had one. Yes. Today I, I had I, a hoe cake. I, yeah. You know what I had for lunch? I had a hoe cake. <laughs> That's funny. But the hoe cake is based on the fried cornmeal, the boiled and fried cornmeal. So, you know, everyone who came in contact with that, and I'm sure, you know, when people first came to this country and they found corn and Native Americans brought it to them, I'm sure they were eating those hoe cakes to survive. <laughs> so, so, okay. So, I got to get one. All right. <laughs> Uh, I said, I took the old and I tried to make it new. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Did you ha- have any second thoughts on the name? No. Or, or is that, does that go back? Is that part of the um, heritage? Is, I, was, a- I was actually um, sitting around at the job I had at the time. Um, I'm, I've also been a cosmetologist for over 35 years. And I was working in a salon at the time when we decided to do the truck. And I was sitting around and I have a friend who is... Um, I don't know how to put it. He's very unusual. He's an incredible person. I've known him for a long time. And we were throwing names back and forth. He's very much a fan of Native American history and Native American culture. And we were talking, and I said, well, what am I going to name this truck? And uh, (laughs) we're looking through these pages, and we're flipping through our phones and on Facebook, and I brought up the reservation site, and I saw Unto These Hills, and I go, oh, I got it. That's a good name, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's a good name. I love the the artwork on the the truck also. Uh, Jeremy, when you sit down with the owners of the uh, people that are going to have these food trucks, you must get pretty in-depth with them about the history of the foods that they are serving so you know exactly what they want created and you actually create that ambiance. Yeah, well, in this particular case, I'm sure they remember very well. This is actually (laughs) one of the trucks that uh, we didn't vinyl wrap because my designers and what they had a vision of was just so far opposite, so they ended up uh, 
um, using a designer locally to wrap their truck. So we built their truck and then they got it. Um, but we had sent them proofs and it just wasn't really what their vision, what they had in mind. And we were going back and forth and they're just like, we gotta, we gotta get the truck. So we'll just end up doing the vinyl wrap ourselves. But yeah, normally we, we do vinyl wraps for 95% of our clients and we sit down with them and figure out what their vision is and um, what their, what their goals are and what their cuisine is and just let kind of our designers do some work and uh, at the same time try to keep the vision of the client in mind too to ultimately come up with one final product. It's, it can get pretty complex though. Sometimes, sometimes designs can take a couple months because these clients want it, want it perfect. I mean, it's their, it's their future business and livelihood. So there's yeah. a lot of things that go into well, it. This is as good a time as any. If you're listening and you are, your interest is peaked. Is that the word I'm looking yes. for? Uh, and you, you're thinking to yourself, you know, I'd like to know more about this. Uh, what's the good way, Jeremy? How do they find out how to get a truck, how to get into this business and, and what they're in for? Um, definitely visit uh, prestigefoodtrucks.com. Follow us on all our social media. Facebook and Instagram are great because we post uh, progress pictures and current trucks that we're working on, so you may see something cool that you like to, to help you think of something for yourself. Um, and definitely, definitely visit uh, Unto These Grills. They really do have a, uh, an amazing and unique product. So if you're, if you're in South Florida, definitely hit them up. Um, when, when, where are you guys going to be that we can come visit you? Are, are you coming up to this area anytime soon? Or? We stay mostly uh, as local as possible uh-huh. uh, within a four-county area right now. Oh, four um, counties. Yes. And uh, we, we, we have a lot of bookings that are reoccurring from last year. So as of now, it's uh, September, August, September are booked for us. So do we? Can we locate you? Like, okay, like Robin has a son in New York, and they, there's a truck up there that sells this ice cream that they like. Yeah. And they have an app on their and phone waffles. that tells them where the truck is. Yes. Do, yes. do you guys have something like that? So if we're down in your area, we can look you up. Yes, we do. How, how do we do we're that? We're on Food Truck Finder. We're on Roaming Hunger. Food Truck there's Finder. There's a few different mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. What's it called? Roaming Hunger. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's right. two of the sites that you can go to, and it'll show exactly where we're at for that day, or you know. Oh wow! I didn't know that. So is that here too? I mean, could I find the, the sure. trucks in Ocala? Sure. Sure. Yeah. And of course. So uh, you know, Facebook. So where do you go when there's no event? Where do you park? You your- go home and cry. No. <laughs> <laughs> If we're not rolling, we're not making money. I know. I love that slogan, um, by the way. We have, <laughs> if we're not rolling, we're not making money. Uh, we have a warehouse facility for banking the truck. And out of that office, he runs his charter business. And I work on the truck and booking and merchandising and marketing all the time. Oh, okay, um, okay. While I've got a chance, I want to say thank you to Jeremy, because when I walked into his office the first day and I sat down, he said, tell me about what kind of truck you're going to have. And I said, that's not going to happen. <laughs> oh my so God. he actually went into this blind with us. Uh-huh. I knew what I wanted, but I didn't want anyone to know what the truck was until it was rolling. Really? Yes. Really? And, and But you didn't even want to tell him? So I was a nightmare to him, and he was so <laughs> patient with me. I think I actually, when I get these looks on my face, I think I actually scared him and the crew a few times. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> and they were so patient, and so they worked so well with us. Is your menu on the, on the internet? Uh, your, your, this is the brand new one. We just rolled it out on Friday of this past week. Okay. I change it every three months. It is seasonal. Um, so as we go into the winter again, it will change. So this is my fall menu heading through August, September, back to school. And uh, Mark gave us a, a website to look up, Florida Food Service Job Finder. Yep, so that's what on is Facebook. That? That's, a, that's a great way for food truckers to post their jobs and also get found. Uh, they can find uh, local postings in the area. Other restaurants and food truckers can post uh, help wanteds and, and where they're going to be day-to-day, hour-to-hour, okay. so on and so forth. That's on Facebook, Florida Food Service Job Mark. Finder. Okay, Mark, thank you. I, I think the uh, sounds behind Jeremy are making their way through the airways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure what that was. Uh, Jeremy Adams, thank you down in Orlando. Mark, Robert DiBenedetto, thank you for what you're doing. You make this a fun morning every Wednesday. Maria S. and George Hershaf, nice to meet the two of you. Nice to meet you. It's, I can't wait to try the food. I'm, I'm going to look you up when I'm down in that part of the state. We hope yeah. so. Thank you for coming up here, and, and have fun while you're up here. Thank you. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. In Thursday night's GOP presidential debate, the field of 10 whittled down from 17. Fox Radio's Tanya J. Powers reports... Donald Trump is one of them. I'm not looking to hurt anybody. I'm not looking to embarrass anybody. Uh, If 